Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're going to learn the most used variables in numeric and data types in Python, how to define them, some useful methods, properties, and general advices around them. So, a quick side note, I will be using Jupyter Notebook, which is an open source web application that allows you to create and share documents that contain live code, equations, visualizations, and text. It's really popular among data scientists, but if you want to use maybe Visual Studio Code or PyCharm, it's totally fine, it will also work. Now, if you're wondering how you can install Python and install uh, the dependencies that I'm gonna show you, I already made a video explaining how to set up Anaconda from scratch, so I will leave you the link in the description if you want to check that first. Okay. Once we have our base Python installation, we are going to install JupyterLab. Again, this is optional, uh, so I will be open a terminal. In this case, is the Anaconda prompt, and I will type pip install JupyterLab. Okay, we just have to give it some minutes. I already have it installed, so it's, it's really fast. And now we are going to type JupyterLab. So you should see uh, on a screen just like this one. And here you can create and run Python from a terminal or from a notebook, which is the option that I'm gonna use. You can also see like a folder browser where you can manage your files and you can even install some extension. So you can make this environment even more powerful. Okay, for now, I'm just gonna click here in the notebook option. And we can see here a brand new space where we are going to code. So let's first rename this notebook. I'm gonna call it types. Okay. So in this first menu, you have like a, a couple options. You can add, for example, new lines of code. You can cut them. You can also run your code to stop it. And you can even change the type of your cell. As I mentioned before, you can also create some text on this document so you can use Markdown to give it a little pretty style and you have documentation along your code, so that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's get started with the basic variables and numeric types in Python. So I'm gonna use this Markdown option so I can show you just a, a couple tips you can use. So for example, this section is gonna be called basic variables types and it's going to contain integers, floats, the boolean type, the none or if you come from other language is also you know the null and the complex numbers. So as you can see here this cell is marked down so it gives a little nice style this and symbol is gonna make this bold, and this symbol is just gonna create a, a list for us. This cell is gonna be code, so for example, I can just type five. Five is just a, a number, an integer in Python, and just we can see here that every time we run something in this cell, there is an output set we, we cannot modify, we just see the output of the code we are running. So that's pretty nice of Jupyter Notebook. You can run just really specific part of your code, see the result and keep going. So, and this is why it's so popular among data scientists because you have to iterate uh, very often. Okay, so first we're gonna start by knowing how we can assign a variable. It's pretty simple. You just have to give it a name, for example, a, the equal sign and the value you want to assign. So in this case, it's gonna be just five. See, if, if I run this, nothing is displayed because I'm just assigning a variable, I'm not printing anything. But if I go and put a down here, you can see there is already a five. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is a integer and we can check this by typing type and between the parentheses a. In this case, this type function it's gonna tell us that the variable a is an int or an integer, okay? In Python 3, an integer is a whole number and it can have any length until your memory is full. So don't worry, and you don't have to declare big int or things like that that come in other language. Okay, now you're gonna see the floating numbers, which is pretty similar to the integers. I'm gonna call it c, and it's gonna be Find point zero. I'm gonna type again. Type of C, and you can see it's a float. So 
What is the difference between an integer and a float? It's basically that you have a decimal point over here. So even if those numbers uh, in the computation might be equal, in the data types, they are not exactly the same. And you can also define a string just like this. And we can again check the type. It's gonna tell you this is an asterisk. So I basically type the five in the three most basic data types or variable types that you wanna call it in Python. Okay, so that's pretty great. Now let's check something. I'm gonna check if for Python, the A variable, which has a value of five, is equal to the C variable, which is equal to 5.0. So you can do that just by using a double equal sign. Okay, so when you use this, you are not assigning a variable. Okay, in Python, you assign a variable with just one equal sign. When you use two, you are making a comparison. So if I type this, it's gonna tell you true. What that means is that for Python, this 5.0 is equal to this five. So again, you can use them like uh, equal values, but, but they have different data types. So just have to make sure of knowing that because in some application that might give you a trouble. Now, with this operation, I already introduced what is the next data type that is a Boolean data type, which is basically the way to define a true or a false value in Python, okay? So there is nothing uh, too special about it. You can just type something like k equal to false and check the type of k and it's a Boolean, okay? So that's pretty nice. You can also do the same for the true value and the output is exactly the same. Okay, now continue with the assignation of variables. I just wanna show you this. If I create a new variable, I can assign its value to the value of an array create variable, in this case, a. So I can type x equal to a, and I'm gonna print a, and you can see the value of this variable is also five. Now, what happens if I change the value of a? So if I say, a now is equal to nine, okay? And I'm gonna check the value of x. What will you expect? Will you expect that x is, a, is updated to nine or it should remain the value you had so far, that is five. So in this case, the value remains to five. And what is that? We can check that pretty easy. There is a Boolean function call ID, which is, uh, I'm gonna simplify it and I'm just gonna say, and that this number is the one that identifies this variable into the computer's memory. So if these two numbers are the same, that would mean that all the changes on this variable would affect the changes in this one. But in this case, you can see it's different and you can change A without uh, changing the value of X. That doesn't apply to all the data types in Python. This doesn't apply to all the data types in Python. And we will see this now moving on, we also have the non type, which is the way that we represent null values in Python. So we're just gonna type uh, y equal to none, and we can see there is a non type that is specific to Python. And just one more, we have the complex data type. I don't use this that often, but I guess it can have some application like in electric engineering, for example. So you know the complex number are a real number plus an imaginary number, which in Python is just denoted by the J. And check the type and it says complex. So you can also work with complex number if some application requires to. And I'm gonna show you some native methods and functions that like comes with Python, which are the really basics and you really have to know how to use them, okay? So I'm gonna type native functions. So the most basic operation are the arithmetic operations. So we can just sum uh, numbers, make division and things like that. So we can type, for example, five plus three. You can see the output is an eight. Uh, we can also just uh, do it with variables, okay? So I can make a plus c, and it's gonna give us 14. Now check this, c is a float and a is an integer. What happens when I sum both of them? It's gonna give us a floating number, okay? So that is something just to keep in mind. Now we have the division. 
which is really simple. For example, 10 divided by 3, it's going to give us 3.333 double slash operation. So you just type this twice and the result now is 3. So what does this operation do? It just basically takes the most closest integer of the no, regular division. So in this case, the closest integer is the number 3. So we can also multiply values just like this. And we can also write exponents where we use the symbol twice. And in this case, the result is 5 multiplied by itself two times. Okay, and if I change this to 3, now it's 5 multiplied by itself three times. So don't confuse it with a regular multiplication. We can also run some numbers. So for example, if I have a floating number, 5.4, I can just run it and it will take the closest value or the closest integer to this number in this case is 5. But if I type around 5.7, it's going to give me 6 because it's the closest integer to this number. There's a little cliche, I cannot let this go. You can also print some values. In this case, I'm using Jupyter. So every time I type something, it will print it by default. But if you're using something like uh, Visual C Code or PyCharm, it won't print it by default. So you can do the really famous hello world with this print function and it will display it, okay? So there are some operators like the plus symbol that also work with strings. So for example, first is gonna be equals to hello, okay? And second is gonna be equals to war. And if I just sum this together, first plus second, it's gonna give me hello war. Of course, it's all together because I didn't leave a white space around here. But you can also use this symbol to concatenate several strings so working a little bit more with strings, you can also use some methods. A method in Python, we're going to see later how you define them. But the way to use it is by using the dot symbol, and then we are going to call the method. So for example, there is a method called upper, which gives us this uh, value, which is hello, in the upper case. Okay, I can also use, for example, and this is split function, what it's going to make is going to split this string by a character that I'll tell it. So in this case, when I don't use any arguments inside this function or this method, uh, the default character is just a white space, okay? So if I just click enter, so you can see in this case, there are two white space around here. So each of these elements are split into something that is called a list. And we are gonna see what that is. If I do the same, but in this case, I don't leave this by default, but I use an argument. In this case, this dash is gonna understand that it's gonna find this character and it's gonna split what is to the left and to the right of that character, okay? So in this case, it's hello, we a space, and space, war, okay? So you can play with this. And now moving to some other operation with numbers, there is something that is really cool in Python. So for example, you have a is equal to five, and you want to increase the value of a, let's say by two. So in some language, you might do something like this. A is equal to A plus two, for example. And we're gonna check that A is equal to seven, that is fine. But in Python, we can also do this. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna change this, and I'm gonna use this symbol, plus and equal. What this means is exactly this, okay? So take the value of A and increase it by two. And again, we have the, the number seven. This also can be done with no other kind of operation. So for example, if I do the multiplication, so in this case, what I'm telling Python is that A is equal to five, and now A is gonna be the value that it already has multiplied by two. So we have 10 as an output. Okay, so there are a lot, a lot of more uh, bool-in functions that you can use with strings and these kind of variables. Uh, there is a really, really huge, huge list. I'm gonna leave you in the description some link with the, the most used one. I don't want to make this long. I think with these particular uh, methods, you should be fine just to get started, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna leave this video until this point. I don't want to make it so long. But in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about the most used data structures in Python, which are the list, set, tuples, and dictionaries. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe. 
And if you find this video useful, you can leave it a like as well. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comment and I will get to you as soon as I can. So I will see you in the next video.